Hey, what's up? Don't click away. Today I'm going to show you how we replace a cracked front screen on a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Hey, what's up? I'm Javi Guzman with MrPhoneDoctor.com and thank you all so much for tuning in and checking out this episode. Now, if this is your first time here and you guys enjoy all things tech and repair related, please make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and smack that bell so you're notified on our latest videos. If you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions, or even need a screen repair, please visit us at www.MrPhoneDoctor.com or reach us at any of our social media platforms found below. All right, now that we got all that out of the way, what is up guys? Thanks once again for checking out this episode. You guys are in for a treat. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how we replace a cracked front screen on a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Now this process will work properly fine as long as your display is fully working, digitizer touch is responsive, and there is very minimal bleeds or any kind of blemishes. Now, if it does have some bleeds, we can attempt this repair, but it is a little more riskier because during the lamination process, we do put a little bit of pressure on the OLED when we're laminating the glass and OCA back to the display. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what this display looks like. I am gonna, of course, plug it into our tester here. And if you do wanna access the test menu, you can do this by dialing star pound zero, star pound on any non-Verizon device, okay? Now, if it is a Verizon phone, I'm sorry, but you cannot test this setting. You have to pop in another SIM and change into carrier settings on it. But uh, let's go ahead and log in. This is a T-Mobile one, so this will work fine. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to just go to, pound, uh, go to the phone screen like you're gonna make a phone call. Dial star pound zero, star pound. And here we go, this is what we have. So you have several different options for you to choose from. The major one we want to look at is the touch because we want to make sure that the touch and everything is uh, fully responsive. There is no dead zones on the digitizer. And of course, with this white background, it makes it very, very easy for you guys to spot any kind of bleeds or blemishes and things like that. So you guys can see here that this one is flawless minus this hairline crack that is up here on top. Now, first things first, we do need to first create a incision point. And to do that, what we're gonna use is we use our dot glass. I did make a video on this little device and we are gonna be having a giveaway, so make sure you guys click up here if you guys have more information on this uh, Oka dot glass. We are gonna have this available for sale on our store and of course the giveaway, so stay tuned. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go ahead and uh, put two brakes, one here and one here. Once we have that broken, we can set it to heat up. So let's go ahead and begin doing the brakes. So we're gonna wanna align the dot glass precisely right on the bezel. I like to let it hit the bezel and once it hits, I'm gonna go ahead and drag it down. That way I'm clear from any metal. So we're gonna go ahead and just set this in here. Get a little tight. And I'm gonna feel it go right up against the metal bezel. Okay, so this looks good, feels good, and we did it. We got one break here, I'm going to do another break right on here. And sometimes depending on how it breaks, if you see that it goes across, you don't need to do two breaks, but on this one I do need to break one more. So there we go, you can see our two brakes right here, right here, and these left some beautiful spider webs which we can go ahead and clear all this out using our 9666 and our Oka clear card. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a test real quick just to make sure everything is up and working. And you can see here how everything is still responsive. Brakes were perfectly right on where we needed them and our touch is working. Good, good. So our next step is, of course, we're gonna wanna set this on our heating plate. And temperature, for all you guys asking, it is 90 degrees Celsius, we like to use 90. Um, let it heat up for, I say, a good five minutes. Once it's hot, we can begin the glass removal. And um, I know there's a lot of you guys out there who are trying to do this. I do recommend, um, let a professional handle this. You know, I make this look very, very easy and it honestly is not, you know. Um, it just takes a lot of practice and training to get down to the level that we're at. So if you guys do need a repair, please reach out to us. 
we can definitely get that done. It's not worth you guys doing a one-off repair trying this because it's gonna lead to more damage and these displays aren't cheap. If you damage this OLED, you're gonna be looking about 350 up to maybe even 450 just for the screen repair. So um, leave it for a professional and we can definitely get you guys all squared away with that, okay? So I'm gonna set this here. I'm gonna cut and we'll come back here in about five minutes as soon as this gets up to temp. All right, the device is nice and toasty. We can go ahead and begin removing. I am gonna wanna go ahead and start from the two incision points that I left on top. And to do that, we are gonna use our 9666, which works wonders. I know you guys are asking, where do you get this? Or it's expensive in my country, but we do have it available in store. So visit us at mrphonedoctor.com and you can check out our web store and all these other tools that we use on our videos. So we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and just begin here, removing this first little section. And you want to be very, very critical and sensitive here. And you want to be very, very gentle here, not to damage this OLED getting in here. Just want to gently insert the OCA card on here. And this will just cut all these little shards off. And any little hairline splinters and stuff like that, you want to get out of the way. So I really hope you guys are enjoying these videos. It's been a while, man, since I've actually done one of these repair videos. I've been eager to get my hands on some of these latest devices and we have finally done so. So I'm gonna have some more videos coming out. I got the S21s lined up, S21 Pluses, and those are gonna be pretty cool because there's actually several different methods of repairing those. We could do those in frame and out of frame. I just wanna clear out all these little shards. Always wanna have a nice clean work area before um, continuing because these little shards, they'll get in there once you start cutting and removing this glass, those little guys will get in here and cause some damage. They'll either scratch or polarize or even cause like dead pixels. So you always wanna make sure that you clear out all the little shards of glass out of here. All right, so this one's coming along good. This one did have a little more webbing and smaller shards. So I'm paying a little more closer attention to this one. You wanna make sure that everything comes off smoothly. So this does take time, guys. Don't rush through these, okay? You know, even us, I mean, sometimes removing the glass, it could take up to 20, 30 minutes. That's just for the glass removal. So for the most part, it looks like we're good there. We have a, two very clean openings right here. So next, we're gonna go ahead and use our line. And the line we're gonna be using is 0.05. We like to use this one just because with these series devices, the polarizer is thinner, so we don't want to use too thin of a line because it'll end up going underneath and uh, clipping it, causing damage to the polarizer. And I do like to get a nice clean line. Want to make sure that there's no kinks on it. See that? You can see how the line gets curly. And this one's not too bad, but you know, other times it's just too curly cute and you don't want to work with that. I'm going to start over here and it looks like there's a piece of shard. And any shards, broken shards, once they are relieved, just get them out of the way. Way there. Uh, 
Alright, glass removal is successful. I'm gonna add a little bit of solution here just to soften anything that may be still adhered to the panel. And I'm just gonna gently remove this glass. And there we have it. Look at that. Good old Gorilla Glass. So our next step is gonna be, of course, we're gonna wanna give this a nice clean. We're gonna use our little rotary tool and then we're gonna use our magic eraser sponge to remove all this glue. Let me go grab those tools and then we'll be right back. So since the phone is still nice and warm, I'm gonna begin cleaning. We're gonna use our little rotary tool here, which of course, if you guys need these, visit us. Visit our shop, mrphonedoctor.com, we got it all. All right, let's go ahead and remove. I'm gonna go in and start with all the excess, get all the large excess. Once I have that out, I'll go through and give it a nice deep detail clean with our 9666. Alright, so majority of it's clean. We got all the excess glue off. Next, I can go ahead and begin using our solution and our magic eraser here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little amount here to the middle and work my way from the in out. You guys can see how wonderful this solution and sponge works. And of course with these, since we do have to do these out of frame, I'm gonna have to go ahead and skin this OLED from the mid frame chassis. So that's just one other step that we gotta do. It doesn't take long. You just wanna be very, very gentle when you're doing it. There, so now it's nice and clean. Look at that. So next I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this off. And to do so, I'm just gonna use this OCA that we have here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get in on here and just start cutting the glue and everything. So I know the flex runs right up on here on this left area. So I'm gonna need to be very careful not to go too deep and hit the flex. <laughs> So it's all a filling game here. You know, you just wanna fill, make sure that you're not forcing this through. ready for the rebuild guys let's go ahead and uh so i'm gonna put, want to put my gloves on for this process since i'm gonna be handling this frame it's very very hot there we go good you always want to pull down because you don't want this flex to hit this chassis and there we go that is the separation of the oled from the midframe chassis and that took me 15 minutes so just for those of you guys out there trying to gauge your time that is my time so about 15, 20 to cut the glass, another 10 to clean, and another 15 to remove the OLED. So all in all, I'd say about an hour for that first process. Then next, we can go ahead and begin laminating. Since this is already clean, there is nothing to clean. All the glue stayed on the chassis here, as you can see. So we're good. But of course, first things first, we do need to test it, make sure it's working. So I'm gonna get my tester out and we'll give it a test. 
And as you can see, she has passed the touch test. There we go, there is the touch removed. So the next step is we're gonna go to the back lab, we're gonna go ahead and laminate our OCA to glass, and then once we have that autoclave, we'll go ahead and laminate the glass to this OLED panel. So let's go ahead and step back in the back. All right, welcome back to the laminating room. So in this next step, I'm gonna be laminating the OCA onto the Note 20 Ultra glass. You can see that here are the two different parts. We are gonna be using our universal OCA mold to laminate everything together. And if you did not see my previous video on the OCA and the magic mold, I did make a video on those two showing you guys how they work and how convenient they are. I'll leave a link up above so you guys could check that out. Of course, first things first, when we do begin applying the Oka 2 glass, we wanna make sure that everything is clean and we're gonna use this base mold here and a little bit of ISO 99 just to give it a little wipe down make sure there's no particles or debris floating around I'm gonna go in and set our glass on this mold firstly once we have our glass we're gonna use our little rubber grommets to adhere the OCA onto it and as I mentioned in my other video, this mold is just fantastic. I just love the use of this. It's universal. You can use it on all model Samsung series. You don't have to worry about fumbling different metal molds like the old YMJ molds that used to come out. So um, really, really convenient. If you guys are getting into this, this is all you need. You don't need to buy all these separate molds. So we always wanna make sure that the punch out on the camera lens is lined up properly. So I am getting a nice overhead view. Just so we get a nice alignment, last thing we want is our camera punch to be crooked once it laminates. And a little hack, if it is crooked, you can also fill it in with a little bit of uh, the liquid loca and the, curing it with the UV. So if it's a little off, you can just put a dab on it and um, just cure it with the UV light. All right, so this looks good. It looks nice and aligned. We're gonna put our top part of the mold on here, which is gonna grab the OCA. And I just like to give this a nice firm press, make sure that's nice and even. So you can see how it grabbed the OCA right there beautifully. And from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and just use my finger to run out any air bubbles. Run all these little guys out. And we have a nice firm grab onto this rubber sticky mold. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reveal the OCA. And then we can reveal the glass. And we can set this on gently, just like so. Open this up. And we will go ahead and start this for this one's going to be running a hundred seconds vacuum and the pressure is going to be a whole time of 150 seconds so for those of you guys out there and of course the temperature on the laminating heating plate is 70 degrees celsius so 70 degrees celsius 100 vacuum and 150 hold time we do this for all the glass this just makes sure that we don't have any kind of uh, bubbling or, or curling on the edges so this is just something that we found out that works great and we're running with it so the laminating process has finished that's going to reveal make sure that everything is aligned properly and here we have her this one actually came out really really good i've noticed on these newer series for some reason there is no bubbling which is great you know even though this doesn't have any bubbles i'm still going to go ahead and want to put it in the autoclave for the 13 minutes this just helps make sure that the Oka gets pressed up firmly against that glass and then we don't have any lifting in the future but let me show you guys this lamination here you can see how perfect she came out so let's go ahead and set this in our autoclave we'll go ahead and uh run this for 13 minutes and once this is finished we'll go ahead and come back and we'll laminate the OLED onto it. Alright the first autoclave has finished let's go ahead and reveal the glass and everything looks perfect as good as it was it was when we put it in there so that's good. So this is the magic mold that we're gonna be using this is amazing it's a nice tacky spongy mold 
you can see. And all these are available on sale on our website. So um, if you guys do need them, visit www.mrphonedoctor.com. Uh, there's a sh shop section on there. You guys can find all these parts on there. There, that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just gently prop her up right here on her flex. So that is safe there. I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the OCA. And we'll go ahead and do the manual alignment here. So we like to start from the top. And just make sure that this punch is lining up perfectly. Once you get it lined up, you just wanna slowly start aligning the OLED down onto the glass. You just gotta pinch, use like a pinching with your fingers. Just let it sit right in. See that? And that's all you need. You don't ever want to have any long presses or anything like that because what happens is the air, once it sucks the vacuum out, you'll get some large ugly bubbles. So just one press is all you need. Now we can set this on our mold. Of course, lining it up with the flex cutout. Good, so we are good there. We can go ahead and set this in. And the settings we're gonna be using is, we're gonna use a 0.3 pressure, 70 degrees Celsius, the vacuum's 80, and the press time is only seven seconds, okay? So this process goes very, very quick. Good, laminating has finished. Let's go ahead and reveal our OLED. And she looks very, very awesome. Just wanna gently lift her out of here. You can see here, Here's the OLED press. I mean, everything's, I mean, there's very, very few bubbles on here, but the quality on this is, is superb. You know, I mean, you don't see any kind of flaws or anything like that with this OLED. So we are gonna wanna go ahead and give it a test, make sure that touch and display is responsive. Touch, everything's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and autoclave this for 13 minutes. Once again, um, once that's done, we'll go ahead and cure it in our UV light. So let's go ahead and uh, process this autoclave. All right, the autoclave has finished. Let's go ahead and reveal our Note 20 Ultra. So there she is. You can see all the bubbles have gone away. Everything is perfect. And then of course, the last step what we do is we put it in our UV light here. This just runs for about three minutes and this just helps cure and harden the Oka as well. So that'll be the last step on here to get this completed. So other than that guys, that's gonna wrap up our video. I really hope you guys enjoyed everything, got some useful information. If you guys uh, have any questions, comments, or need a screen repair, let us know at www.mrphonedoctor.com. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Cheers.